rugged hill country of the east coast of New Zealand. This is the terrain which faced McConnelldale constructors when the company won the contract to lay 150 kilometres of natural gas pipeline in 1984. It was one of the most difficult pipeline projects undertaken anywhere in the world. Natural gas had already reached the pulp and paper industrial complex at Cabral, and it was here in the shadow of Mount Edgecombe that the line began. It was to run from Cabral over some of the wildest and most remote country in New Zealand, down to the Pacific coast and the provincial city of Gisborne. It was a unique job. On every section, McConnelldale constructors faced extraordinary difficulties. The amount of steep country, the inaccessibility of it all, the number of earthquake faults that we've crossed. Extremely rugged terrain uh, through bush, swamps. Um, difference in elevation for testing purposes was a maximum of 440 metres, which gives an idea of the scale of the the vertical scale of the terrain. Uh, also, we had 17 major river crossings. Now, of these, the largest one uh, was 600 metres long and involved the excavation and handling of approximately 60,000 cubic metres of material, which is no mean feat. An additional complication, the job had to be done in winter. McConnell Dowell Constructors is part of the McConnell Dowell Corporation, an international organisation carrying out a wide range of construction work throughout the world. The pipeline expertise of the group has been proven by the construction of pipes over land and underwater in locations all over the globe. McConnell Dahl recently created Australian history with the construction of 480 kilometres of fuel pipeline from Jackson to Mooney in record time, 1,600 kilometres from the nearest major town. They had already laid hundreds of kilometres of pipe in New Zealand taking gas from the huge Maui offshore well to locations throughout the North Island. But Kawara to Gisborne was unique. McConnell Dow prides itself on being able to quickly mobilise a huge range of equipment anywhere in the world. But this job had to start fast. There was a mass mobilisation of men, 200 at the peak of operations, plus 40 vehicles and 120 major items of plant. We had approximately one week from uh, notification of commencement of work and uh, in that week we put together three pipeline spreads from all over the countryside uh, into, the, into this remote, remote area of New Zealand. But the question of access remained a problem throughout the job. Helicopters were essential during every phase of the operation. They handled a huge range of work, including ferrying men into the otherwise inaccessible hill country to begin the day's work. Well, we've employed um, helicopters to a great extent, over 2,000 hours in helicopter time alone. We've had to bring crews in right at the start of sections, and they've not been able to get out until 40 kilometers later, which has meant problems for maintaining gear, and taking gear in and out. Helicopters were the pack horses of the Kawara to Gisborne job, and after their early morning flights to get the men up on the ridges, they carried virtually everything. Fuel, breakers, sandbags, parts for machinery, a new shovel for a digger which has hit rock, and of course, the four inch pipe. right-of-way gangs faced special difficulties. Because the region is slip-prone with its greasy back terrain, the pipe had to be laid on the ridges. This meant tackling slopes frequently steeper than 40 degrees.
It also meant high winds, sleet, heavy rain and snow and low cloud, which sometimes left crew stranded at the end of the day's work. And the ridges demanded the use of different equipment. We've had to use extra gear to produce the right of way that's manageable for us. Um, we haven't been able to use uh, earth moving scrapers or the like. It's main, been in the main dozers and diggers, a lot of winching time, and with a specification that's been extremely stringent. The specification says we've not to do excessive environmental damage. So that means that we can't go willy-nilly bowling down trees and making huge widths of right-of-way. Stringing posed its own problems. Most of the 13,000 pipes used were flown in by helicopter and stringing was often done kilometers ahead while the weather was favorable. Our problems with stringing are uh, keeping pipes basically on these steep slopes. We've had to anchor individual pipes down from time to time. We've had to take out extra quantities of pipe to enable us to do this far in advance so that the weather doesn't catch us out at a later date. At the ditching phase, the crews experienced every difficulty inherent in the steepness of the country and conditions varying from river and swamp to ridges of rock. Once again, winching was frequent and ditching equipment inched down slopes held only by the winching gear of a dozer above. Our problems with ditching have been uh, the amount of rock, the slowness, the winching aspects. Uh, we've tried to use large chain diggers wherever possible, but in the main it's been backhoes all the way. And special um, buckets on for digging rock. The terrain on the Kawarata Gisborne job also meant extremes when it came to bending the yellow jacket pipe. Pipe bending crews worked hard to keep ahead of the welders because the bending rate overall was a massive 70%. And there were lengthy sections where a full 100% of pipes had to be bent. The McConnelldale crews are seasoned and experienced in all phases of the pipelining operation, but they really show their mettle in the welding stage despite extraordinarily difficult conditions. The welding's gone very well. Uh, very, very low uh, percentage repair rate. Um, and the boys have been magnificent. They've had good uh, production rates even when the weather's been bad. The canopies have been ineffective at times. Uh, umbrellas are useless in high winds. Uh, and they've worked through the rain and done a, a damn good job and got very few repairs. 100% of welds are X-rayed to guarantee a perfect join but the repair rate is less than 3%. Good figures, especially with small four-inch pipe. The lower and lay stage meant facing all the same problems of terrain, accessibility and weather. But other problems arose out of the tight job specification. Lower and lay has been a problem all the way through this project, basically because the client insists that uh, a short section of trench be left open at any one time. And in that period, we have to rock shield and slat a good percentage of the length. We also have to put in breakers once the pipe is in the ground. Now, these trench breakers can either be sacks or um, foam breakers, but we prefer to use the foam breakers. We find they're a lot quicker. We've used about 4,000 breakers on this job today. And about how much of the job have you had to use slatting? We have had to use about 35 kilometers of rock shield and slatting. That's a lot. It's, it's a hell of a lot. Despite the wild and remote nature of the country, the job of reinstating the line is as thorough as any other stage of the operation. But the reinstatement presents other difficulties. Those ridges the pipe follows are frequently boundary fences for hill country sheep farmers. Fences have to be torn down, re-erected temporarily while the pipe is going down, and then permanently reinstated at the end of the job. In one spread alone, 
there was 20 kilometers of ridgeline fencing. Hydrostatic testing on this job has been a problem because of the heads involved in going over some of the um, top trig points. Uh, to that extent, we've had to divide the line more than we would have liked. And despite that, we have kept up the program tight behind the restoration crews. McConnell Dahl pipeliners have acknowledged skills at river crossings. There were 80 major crossings on the original Maui gas pipeline through New Zealand's North Island. There were 17 major crossings on Kawarata Gisborne, each presenting its own difficulties. Frequently, as in this crossing of the Waipoa, the river had to be diverted. But all crossings are completed efficiently and without delay. Objectives by doubling the spread length, they can push a lot quicker. At the various bases along the pipeline route, operations are administered by a pool of qualified and experienced construction veterans. The result is pure teamwork, just as it is at McConnell Dale headquarters. Executives and engineers are among the most qualified and experienced anywhere. They need to be, because a job like Kawarata Gisborne is a demanding management exercise. Throughout the world, McConnell Dale hires and trains local people. On this New Zealand job, they're all New Zealanders. But wherever they are, there's something about the McConnell Dale ethos which motivates local people and hardened McConnell Dale veterans. And loyalty is strong, both ways. Oh, I'd say I could stack them against any competition in the world. Soon, a few months after the job began, the pipeline is out of the hills and an eight-inch reservoir section is running across the flat coastal valley toward Gisborne. It's been a job which says a lot about the capabilities of McConnell Dow pipeliners. It's been tough enough to test the heaviest machinery. Yes, it is, and it's tough on the men that are driving it. The, the elements of the country, cold, wind, you know, it's pretty tough on everyone around. As far as the national pipelines are concerned, this must be one of the most difficult pipelines that's been built. And it only serves to show, once again, really, the ability of our crews and our total management structure to perform in adverse conditions and within contract time. Still, despite some of the worst conditions in the world, difficulties of access and a harsh winter, seven months later, the pipeline comes in, on budget and on time. In doing so, it makes the front page of the Pipeliner's Bible, the Industry Journal. It also makes pipelining history. And in Gisborne, they've got the gas to prove it. McConnell Dow Constructors Limited is part of the McConnell Dow Corporation, an organization offering a multinational service encompassing all aspects of engineering, design, construction, supervision and management in widely different international environments. The group has a hard-won reputation for its expertise in engineering, versatility in construction and integrity in management through the many hundreds of projects it has completed throughout the world.